Hi, I'm Laurel Thompson with Strings Magazine, and today I'm going to show you how to hold a violin. So I've had students in the past, beginning students, who came to their first lesson saying, I haven't touched it, I haven't even opened the case, I was too afraid that I might break the instrument. So we're going to start there in case that's your situation, and then when you go to your first lesson, you can be really confident and say, hey, I opened the case, I took out the violin, and I know how to hold it. I'm sure that there'll be some pointers that your teacher can tell you, but I want to give you the basics. So first of all, we're going to open the case and take the blanket off. You may or may not have one of those, but although the violin is delicate, it's, it's going to be hard to break unless you drop it or step on it or sit on it. So just take it by its neck and you can hold it on the body. You can hold it down near the chin rest. Um, you can hold it by the scroll. You know, it's really, you're not going to break it. And then as far as getting into playing position, we may need to have a shoulder rest. But first, let me just show you an easy way that you could hold it when you're not playing, which would be this. So if you're sitting in orchestra or standing, waiting in your lesson, you can just tuck your instrument right underneath your right arm, kind of hook the elbow near the chin rest. You can even take this hand away and it's secure and it's not gonna go anywhere. So why don't you try that with me? So we're gonna take the instrument from the case. I'm gonna take the left hand and wrap it around the neck and then I'm actually gonna come down closer to the body of the instrument and hold it so I have a secure grip. And I'm just gonna take it and I'm going to stick it under the right arm. All right, so coming from here, this is a really easy starting point for getting into playing position. We wanna have a playing position that is natural and free of tension and we can start to figure out what that might be without a shoulder rest, but then a little bit later I'll show you what a shoulder rest might look like. Likely when you first purchase or rent your instrument, you won't have a shoulder rest. You'll need to go back and purchase one that's right for you. Chin rests are another thing that you may need to experiment with. The chin rest should be basically the opposite of your chin. So my chin is, is fairly defined. So you'll notice that I have a chin rest that is fairly defined. It has a scooping place where my chin bone can rest down. So you wanna find a chin rest that's a good fit and then you wanna rest the edge of the body of the instrument against your collarbone. Rest with natural weight coming onto the chin rest. And then as far as your left hand, if you're without a shoulder rest, your thumb is going to need to do some work with holding up your instrument. So there's kind of a whole movement right now of people going without shoulder rests. And if you are keen to give that a try, just know that what we don't want is a gripping between the index finger and the thumb. That's gonna to lead to poor intonation, it's gonna be hard to shift to other positions. You know, you're gonna kinda of always feel like your violin is one step away from falling to the ground. And that's not going to help anything. So, um, so resting on the thumb, this can just be a good way to start when you first get your instrument, just to feel like, wow, you know, the instrument actually isn't that heavy, and I can just hold it here and it's kind of a bridge between my thumb and my collarbone. So there's a starting point. Once you actually want to start playing, you may need to have something here. Um, I suggest that you start with something minimal and then gradually work up into maybe something that's more complex if you need it, only if you need it. So something that would be the most basic, if you don't have anything, but maybe a blanket, you can use the blanket. This can, you can upgrade this to gradually to a sponge or they have different pads that are filled with air that you could use and strap onto the instrument. But for now, since let's say I don't have anything, I'm just gonna use this and put that so that my instrument's still gonna be resting on the collarbone, but then this is gonna kind of fill in the gap between where the instrument back is and where my shoulder is. 
and that already feels much more secure. So then I can start to think about my left hand position. And likely when you first start playing the violin, you're going to be in what we call first position. And so what I'm looking for is the violin neck to just be suspended between sort of this area of the index finger, right where you see that little line at the base of the index finger, and somewhere on the, the pad of the thumb. So you can see there. And in my case, the thumb is just peeking over the edge. Sometimes it might come even further below. Let's say that I want to come up to a high position. You won't be doing that yet, but the thumb, it's not set in stone where it, where it needs to be. But, but just to start, this is a good starting point. And you can see, too, that the thumb is straight up and down. So you don't want to have the thumb kind of leaning back or underneath like a guitar, unless, like I said before, you were going to try to play without a shoulder rest and, and you would need some support here. With a shoulder rest, really all of, the, all of the support is coming from your head resting down into the chin rest and sandwiching the violin into your collarbone and your hand is free to shift around and, you know, play on all your strings and do whatever it needs to do. So taking it up a level, we could have something like this, which is a bar type shoulder rest. This one I've bent to fit the contours of my particular anatomy. So I have a little part here that hooks over the kind of collarbone as it extends out into my shoulder. And I still have this part of my collarbone free to contact the instrument. I like that and it, it, it makes me feel really secure and I can also feel the vibrations of the instrument in my body. Um, similar to if you were playing without a shoulder rest. So that's my particular preference. Then I've bent this down so that it rests against my ribs. And I like the half moon shape because for me, um, you know, I have a fairly defined shoulder and uh, my collarbones are fairly defined. So I, I need that sort of wrap around. If, if you're broader or have a broader shoulder, something more like a pad or um, one of the shoulder rests that are more like a straight bar, such as this one, it just has a little bit of a scooping. That might be a better fit for you. You can see on me that this one kind of hangs out over here, and that's it, it would end up kind of tilting back and forth a little bit. That's not going to be as comfortable or as secure. I'm likely going to end up gripping the violin over here because it just doesn't feel like I can support myself. So you want to spend time experimenting. So putting on this shoulder rest, I just hook on the little feet on one side. And then on the other side, I can either slide it on like that. Or sometimes you can go ahead and kind of pull it and hook it on. Again, even though this wood is really thin, you're not going to be breaking it if you're just, if you're just doing that. You know, if you're hammering on it, then it, that might be a problem. So then you see that the scoopy part is going to be right here. So it's on the same side as the chin rest. And voila. With this sort of a shoulder rest, I can be completely hands-free and talk to you. I could get up and walk around. And um, that's my preference. But again, if you wanted to try it without a shoulder rest, that's perfectly fine. And there are certain teachers that specialize in helping people develop a natural uh, instrument hold without a shoulder rest. So we just need to think about a couple more things when we're positioning a violin. So again, going back to the left hand, we just want to make sure that especially this area is not gripping. So if you're ending your practice with sort of a dent in your index finger, then that's a problem and you know can lead to in issues with intonation and shifting and and later down the road, when you want to do something like vibrato, it's going to be hard to get the wiggling going if you're locked down here. So you want to keep this open and free. And really, it all comes back to how you're holding the instrument up here. If this feels secure, then you can learn to just take your instrument up and barely touch your hand up, rather. <laughs> take your hand down. Take your hand up. Just lightly touch take your hand down. So now that we have this shoulder rest in place, 
going to just touch base on a few things that you need to be aware of when you're setting up your instrument hold. So first of all, going back to the left hand, we don't want to have any sort of gripping between the thumb and the base of the index finger. We want to have a little space underneath and we just want this part to be free to move. If it's gripping, and sometimes it can be hard to tell if you're gripping, but certainly if you end up with a dent later on, I got one just from doing that just then, <laughs> um, then, then that's a good indicator that you might be gripping. And um, you will, as you play, you'll, you'll get little calluses, you'll get little dents in your fingers of, from the strings, and that's perfectly natural. But if your fingertips are starting to really hurt, and your hand is, is tensing up or cramping, that's a really strong indication that you're, you're applying way too much pressure and you're, you're gripping the neck. The neck is not not gonna go anywhere. So you want to train yourself to have a good instrument hole here and experiment if you don't. And then once this is secure, and it's like, yep, the violin's not going anywhere. You could even have someone come over and shake your scroll around. It's like, nope, I've got a good grip then take your arms down to your sides and bring your left hand up and just learn to gently, lightly touch the neck and get into position. You want to just do that a few times. And when you're just starting out as a beginner, that could be your practice for a week. Just learning to get into position and do so without ten tension and stress. Very important for playing later on when you want to do vibrato, say, and you know if you're tense here, you're not going to be able to move. You, this needs to be open. When you want to shift later on, you'll need to actually move up and down the fingerboard. So another thing that we need to talk about is the angle of the violin coming out from your center line. So some people like to have the violin a little bit more in front of them. If you're just starting off, you might want to see your fingers, but really you want to be able to have your violin in a position that's the most comfortable for your body. So depending on what kind of frame you have, whether you have wide shoulders or really narrow shoulders, that could be a factor, and kind of where your collarbone sits. So for me, and I think just as sort of a, a general good starting point, about 45 degrees out from your center line is a good place to have your scroll. You might see people with their violins way up here, and you know that can lead to tension in the neck if you're having to do this. And if the violin is way out in front, then you can see that the arm here is having to strain under, and if I were to come and try and play on the G, I would have to come just so far under, it would, it would really lead to a lot of tension in the shoulder and in the back of the body there. So just taking the middle road right down 45 degrees is, is a good place to start with the scroll. And you might have to adjust your shoulder rest, you know, just try different positions in order to facilitate that. So then another thing we wanna talk about is the slope. So we want to have the strings sloping ever so slightly down. We certainly don't want to have them just parallel to the floor. And we certainly don't want to have them very sloping. It's going to be impossible to bow. So again, just sort of taking the middle road where basically if you were playing on the G string, and I'll demonstrate this, oops, your bow is going to be parallel to the ground. So I'm on the G, roughly parallel to the floor. If I were here, I would have to take my arm way up and, and that would cause some stress and tension in my arm. Just this isn't a natural position for the shoulder to be up that high. So again, just parallel. And if I was here, the G might be fine to play on, but the E, I would have to wrap all the way across my body to get there. And we have this concept that you'll probably learn later on when you're playing of natural arm weight, just sort of letting gravity hold the bow onto the strings. When you're like this, gravity is basically pulling the bow down to the ground. So 
hopefully that gives you an idea. And again, it's, it's just a matter of experimentation, figuring out the right setup, be it a shoulder rest, a chin rest, or nothing that works for you, and then managing these finer details to get a position that just feels like the violin or the viola can be an extension of your body. So if you have any other questions about any of these topics or would like to go further, then definitely check out Strings Guides. And I hope that you have a good experience playing your instrument and that this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.